map to entity, right? Which entity are you mapping? Now, what am I doing here? Now, I need to explain because no point following me, right? And I don't explain to you what are we doing here. That's my uh, uh, training style here, okay? That is why, okay, I, I'm not being arrogant here, okay? But those of you who have trained under me, I'm sure you like my training style because that's what I do. We do the lab exercise together, but I will need to tell you the objective, what to do here and what not to do, what to be cautioned, what to be anticipated. So this step here, map to CDM entity. Now, do you remember just now when we started with process advisor? I'm not so sure about you, but I did get uh, a caution, not to say a caution, but a note that I don't have a database. They prompt me to create a database, remember? Remember, I told you that to create a database, it's actually a Dataverse database, right? So that database in Dataverse created, right, it's for a reason because that's our common data model. In Dataverse, there are a series of tables or last time they call it entities. These tables are standard tables. They are built in and they are shared across the entire Dynamics 365 because Dataverse is a storage which are shared and accessible by the entire Dynamics 365, whether it's CRM, whether it's FNO, whether it's supply chain management, sales and field marketing, whatever, okay? So anything under the sun, okay, they are all accessible through your Dataverse. Now, out of so many tables or entities in your Dataverse, there are two entities, right, which captures logging information. Look at this, activity log or event log, only two. So which one do you want to map? I mean, we are talking about your table, your data here. Which one do you want to map it in so that this data, right, is going to be pumped into that common data model, that table. So if you choose activity log, right then they ask you to map which column to what column but i want you right okay, to map it to the event log rather than that why because activity log they will show you attributes expected anticipated activity name column is needed case id start timestamp and ending timestamp there's a start and end time because activities tracks start time end time but do you remember that in our case, we only have start timestamp. We don't have end timestamp. Let me show you again. Let me cancel this. Look at that. Look at my table here. Look at our table rather from the CSV file that we copy and pasted. We only have start time. We don't have end time. Start time without end time means it's an event. You are tracking events. If you do have start time and end time, you are tracking activities. Remember that. So when I click map to entity here, event log, look at that. Event log allows you to enter start time without end time. Activity log, you will have a pair of start and end. So that's the reason why I want it to be mapped to event log. Choose event log, please. Now, they require only three columns. We have got so many columns here. Look at that. Let me cancel again. We've got all these columns, right? We've got case ID here. We've got activity name. We've got timestamp. In fact, these three columns is what they needed. So when you map to the entity event log, let's start doing mapping. Now, you can click auto map, you know. It's really cool here. Auto map, right, is going to self-discover which column name that matches the entity column. Entity attribute means that's the column name from the entity. So let's try auto map. If it doesn't work, you can still change it. Don't worry, right? I click auto map. Look at that. Look at the AI. They are so easy, right? That the AI does detect the column name matches with the entity attribute. Now that is so because my column names are fully the same with the attribute name. Even though the attribute name started the first word with a lowercase, in our case, our column names are all title casing. This is camel casing. Case ID to case ID, activity name to activity name, start timestamp to start timestamp. That's good. 
that's that's wonderful. All right, now click OK when you are done. When you are done, when you certify and verify all these things are there, click OK. All right, so you should have actually added a new uh, applied step. It's just like your Power BI, you know, the Power Query Editor, where you've added a new step mapped to CDM. Okay, map to it. Now remember, in case right, you want to also add additional columns right to make them useful, to make them uh, meaningful. Now you can still designate additional columns for analysis. Okay, if you want to designate new columns, extra columns for analysis, now you can actually apply more columns. Now, on top of the three columns, currently Power, uh, this process advisor supports up to five additional columns on top of the three required ones. The three, activity name, case ID, start timestamp, right? On top of these three, you can add five more additional columns, no more than five as of the time right now, okay? Supports up to five more columns. But you see, we've got like location, role and resource. I think we don't need this, okay? We can just click on save and analyze. Let's do save and analyze. So we are done here and let's do that together. Click the bottom here, save and analyze. Now we are going to have to wait for a while. Is there a reason for the limit to the additional columns that can be added? Well, yes, there is a reason actually. Because you see, the more columns you add, right, you are adding more dimensions to the process mining. So currently the process mining, right, the more columns you add, the slower it gets uh, to complete the process mining or the process discovery. You see, so currently they say as of optimally five additional columns on top of the three should suffice to maintain optimal performance during the process mining. Anything more than that, right? Microsoft may, may seem to say that uh, I don't think so. The process mining and discovery uh, would be optimal. So that's what Microsoft explained to us. That's the reason they gave to us why they put a cap limit of five additional columns. So you can see that mine is ready. Ooh, cool. Mine is ready. So just a couple of minutes. Let me just close this. There we go. They are now showing me the dashboard. All right, look at that. Mm. There we go. That's the process map. Look at that. This is actually the process map. And this will be there. Average case duration, 7.02 days. Median case duration, 6.99 days. How many variants they discover? How many cases altogether? Activities charted and all that. OK, so this is actually the bar graph, you know, the charts and stuff like that. You, you are able to filter and stuff like that as well. OK. Now, let me try to explain to you a little bit one by one. OK, I am not going to go deep down into it because we got no time to <clears throat> go into that. So let me just show you roughly okay, what are all these uh, particular dashboard. So the first one that is very visible, very attracted, your eyes will definitely look at it for the very first time, is this mind map, is this so-called uh, flow chart here, right? 